Hi everyone, Anna here, and today we are going to talk about my October wrap up. <sighs> today is election day in the United States, the day that I'm filming this, and I decided to take a half day off because my anxiety just wasn't happening. <laughs> My job is just so correlated with government and I just didn't want to think about it anymore. I didn't want to like be in that headspace anymore. And so I decided what better thing to do than to talk about books and make a video to get my mind off of things until we know the outcome. I don't know if we'll know the outcome tonight. That's a different story. In fact, I just finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I will give you my thoughts on this book later because I will be posting um, a new ser video series, which is my first time, and it'll be documenting my first time reading a specific popular author. I feel a little, that's my hair. <laughs> I feel a little behind a lot of booktubers, even if they didn't have a channel before or they're new booktubers, they're like really well read and I am not that. Not that I'm not well read, I shouldn't say that. I should say that I've been reading a lot of non-fiction books, like self-help books in the last couple years. So all of these new releases and all of these really popular authors, I just haven't read them. There's a lot of authors out there that I have yet to experience and I would like to document my experience experiencing them. That tangent is now over. Let's get into my October wrap up. This past month has been actually pretty well balanced overall. I did some YA, some middle grade, some adult, and some nonfiction. So this kind of runs the gamut. Let's start with my middle grade books. The first book that I read, I just, and that is City of Bones by Victoria Schwab. I loved this book. It was just the right touch of spooky for Halloween and fall. In this book, we have a girl named Cass. Cass, our protagonist, has this near death experience and she now finds herself somewhere between life and death and she can now see ghosts after this accident and nobody else knows that she can see ghosts and her parents uh, you'll find out in the beginning of the book they get this new tv show uh, offer where they go to these very infamously spooky places like edinburgh is where this book takes place she has this paranormal experience there in Edinburgh. I don't want to spoil it for you. Things I really loved about this book, Victoria Schwab is such a good author. Like she is so good at crafting words together. I am so impressed by that. <laughs> I dream of having her ability and skill in just framing things and her characterizations are so good. You fall in love with the characters. You get sufficiently spooked out. If you guys watched my November TBR for Believe Thon, I mentioned how much I love the author Tamora Pierce and Victoria Schwab definitely in her middle grade range uh, definitely gives me those same vibes. The emphasis on characterizations of just the relationship between a young a young person and the adults around them and the trust building that happens there, the camaraderie that happens there, the elements of friendship, even the type of humor seems very similar between the two authors and I enjoy that. <laughs> I'm not complaining about that at all. Just mentioning to Bora Pierce, uh, my best friend Lisa and I finished Wolf Speaker. Wolf Speaker is the second book in the Immortal series by Tamora Pierce. And in this book, we continue the story of Dane, who is a girl with wild magic. She has the ability to speak with animals and immortal creatures who are not human-esque. In this book, she finds herself back in with old friends, some wolves, a wolf pack, and they ask her to help them save their valley from the two-leggers who are pillaging and ruining their resources and habitat. It's a really good book. Again, the characterizations of different animals are so good. The, the, the setting and the space of time is really good. Um, Tamora Pierce is excellent at moving a story forward and in world building. I really, really appreciate that and uh, it's a book that I really, really enjoy. You'll notice so far I'm not giving ratings and that's intentionally. I don't find myself qualified to rate books. I did it for my September wrap up, but I, I just don't, I feel weird rating books because I'm not an author. I'm not um, a literary scholar. I'm just a consumer of books. All I can do is share my reading experience based on my preferences. Okay, we're just gonna have to deal, you guys. I'm sorry about the lighting. 
sorry about the mess. I'm all shadowy. Um, the sun is setting and it's reflecting back on my neighbor's window, which is like perfectly placed to blind me. <laughs> so, so two of the YA books I attempted were Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer and Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. So Midnight Sun is Twilight's retelling from Edward's perspective. I DNF'd it. I just wasn't enjoying reading it. There was not a lot of new information for me and I got really bored and it's just a preference thing. Um, consumed the story of Twilight multiple times, whether it was rereading the Twilight series or watching the movies over and over again. I just, it's overdone for me in my life. I did mention this in my DNF tag, but I would buy into a new moon retelling from Edward's perspective since he's not there for half the book. The second book is Force of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. This book is a reimagination, I think, of the evil queen trope. I ran out of space on the camera. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about Force of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. Our main protagonist in this book is Shi Fen. She is a beautiful yet very poor girl living in a peasant village way outside from the capital of this land. I think it's called Feng, Feng Lu. And her aunt, who is kind of like this like sorceress, shaman, dark magic pr like practitioner, basically tells Zhi Fen that it is her destiny to become empress of the land. And Zhi Fen is not one that can let this idea of grandness, of power, of luxury slip from her hands. She's lived a lifetime of neglect and torture. She's hungry for love and acceptance and adoration. She is a jealous person. She is not very likable in my book. Uh, it was a little bit difficult for me to get through this book because I didn't like our main protagonist and I don't think she's supposed to be likable and once I wrapped my head around that I was like okay I'm not supposed to like her it's not a question of whether she's good or gray it's like she's like not good she does a lot of things intentionally that just color her in darkness like she just she takes every opportunity no matter the cost to manipulate the people around her. Things that are really good about this book, all of the side characters and supporting casts that are like aligned with the light, with goodness, are lovable. They are, they are endearing and trustworthy. You really get kind of attached to the characters, the supporting characters, at least I did. And all of the characters that you're supposed to dislike, that you're supposed to hate, you hate that. There's a character in this book, oh my gosh, she was the worst. I, I wanted to punch her myself, that's how bad she was. I would recommend this book for people who like historical K-dramas with an element of fantasy. So someone who likes something like Scarlet Heart Rio would like this book a lot. So onto my adult fiction, I read um, Uprooted by Naomi Novik. In Uprooted, we open to this small village um, on the outskirts of this really evil forest called The Wood. And in this village, to maintain protection from the evil forest, they basically pay a tribute to the dragon who is this like really grand wizard. And so his form of payment is one girl every 10 years. And he's very specific about like the year that they're born in so that the village knows like if any of your girls are born within this year, they are potentially going to be selected by the dragon. The synopsis for me is a bit lacking and I think that that was a hitch I had to get over because I was expecting one type of story and it is not the type of story. So if I was to make up a synopsis, I would say that this book is about this village that pays tribute to the dragon, the great wizard, for protection against the evil forest and our young protagonist, Aneshka, gets selected. Nobody really understands the workings of the dragon and why he does this, what happens to the girls. All they know is that after the 10 years, they come back to the village and they stay for a little bit and then they go off <laughs> uh, and have a different adventure and they don't stay in the village any longer. Aneshka gets picked and of course she's scared to death. She doesn't know what this dragon is going to do to her. She's really terrified of him and he's not exactly warm and fuzzy. So eventually what ends up happening is without giving up too, I'm trying not to not spoil it. So without giving too much, eventually what happens is 
Aneshka and the dragon have to go into the forest to find a way to beat back the forest because it's like growing. And the thing about this forest is that if you come into any contact with its pollen, with its creatures, you get bitten, uh, you walk in there and you breathe the air, you can become what's called corrupted. And by law, you're supposed to be executed because they can't trust you because you're corrupted. Um, and there's not a cure that is known for corruption. This book is sufficiently creepy. <laughs> um, there were a lot of scenes with the corrupted that really freaked me out. Um, there were a couple scenes where it was like, you know, and then the bone snapped and it was like so gruesome uh, in my imagination. And the only thing that I didn't like in this book is the romance. The romance made no sense for me. I don't know. The romance just wasn't in there for me. It felt kind of out of place. Like there, it's, there's nothing wrong with like, okay, I'm gonna put this out here. Spoiler, so if you don't wanna know about the romance in this book, just skip. <laughs> but uh, skip to the next book in the timestamp uh, in the chapters below. So in this book, the romance between the dragon and Aneshka is so misplaced. Like I kind of understood like the first initiation of romance. I was like, okay, this situation makes sense. Like bedazzling and woohoo-ry. Like I get why this would be like enticing with what it could be like mixed up feelings. I get that. But then like they spend time apart and I guess distance makes the heart grow fonder. I don't know. I, I'm not into it. Like he treats her with disdain. He treats her like she's so annoying. And it's not like you have the counterbalance of like, oh, and then he had like sent her soft glances from afar or like, yeah, like he doesn't, just, I don't know. For me, it just wasn't there for, as far as the romance is concerned. Um, I did love the rest of the story um, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, the other rela the relationship I had an issue with was between Anashka and Kasia. I didn't feel their friendship, um, at all, and I don't know. I just didn't feel it. I don't know if it was just me. I don't know. I feel like there wasn't, there like weren't enough moments of like tenderness. There weren't enough moments of closeness between the two characters that I could kind of get on board preference again this is my preference but i still thoroughly enjoyed this story i thoroughly enjoyed the writing i just wish those interpersonal connections were a little bit more played out for my preference the next book that i read was the starless sea by aaron morgenstern this book is so beautiful <laughs> when i attempted to read this book myself i felt pretty confused uh because it kind of is like everything and nothing at the same time and it's really, really beautiful. Uh, the book opens with the story of this pirate who is imprisoned and this young woman and like, and how they're like silently falling in love. And I was here for it, especially with the audiobook. It was so good. And then it jumps to the story about an acolyte and then about like this acolyte, you know, promising and just like the different um, rituals the acolyte has to go through to become an acolyte and then it jumps to our main story which is Zachary Ezra Rollins and how he finds this door that he feels like he's supposed to go in into and he doesn't and then later he finds this mystical book that has the story of the pirate that you just read the story of the acolyte that you just read and his story of finding the door and it's kind of this uncovering of stories within stories and he goes kind of on this trippy adventure <laughs> yes i was confused most of the time yes i loved the writing it was so beautiful and stunning and just really atmospheric but i didn't get it like if there was supposed to be a point to the book i missed it i still really liked it i especially love the audiobook because different voices narrate different things so you have a narrator for um zachary's zachary ezra Rollins. you have a narrator for him you had a narrator for the pirate you had a narrator for the acolyte you had a, a narrator for a few of his friends that become important towards the end of the book and so i really liked that i also liked how different pieces started to come together throughout the book but it's kind of like getting all the edge pieces of a puzzle and then nothing in the middle that's how i felt when i read this book uh, at the end of it i was like 
what? <laughs> what is Yeah, if you kind of love just beautifully written prose and beautiful imagery with not much of like a direct point or a point that's like kind of ambiguous, you might like this book. So let's go into my nonfiction reads for this month. I read Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a memoir. So Chanel Miller was the Jane Doe during the Brock Turner case a few years ago. He be he Chanel and uh, in the middle of trying to get that done he was stopped by two pedestrians two Swedes coming by and basically pulled them off um, Chanel's intoxicated passed out body and her experience encapsulated in this book was infuriating <laughs> and like empowering and frustrating and like just <laughs> It just shows how corrupt our system is and how when the Me Too movement was kind of rolling out and why uh, there would be individuals who would be like, oh my gosh, now like I'm a dude and I can't even like talk to a woman. I can't even like approach a woman without being sexual harassment. Oh my gosh, poor me. You don't understand like what it's like to be a woman. You don't understand the struggles there are I don't live on first floors apartments ever because I'm scared that someone could easily break in. I have a little door stopper on my door that like even if somebody was to break the lock, the this little door stopper basically prevents the door from opening. Um, it's like a little leverage that holds the door like this. Like if anything happens to us, that is, you know, whether it's unwanted advances, assault, anything that comes towards us any violence towards us it's our fault somehow you shouldn't have worn that you shouldn't drink that much you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that and it's your fault if these things happen to you like you're asking for it and no unless i asked for it i didn't ask for it <laughs> and i think i hardcore related to chanel and i don't think that like i'm like the gift to all mankind or anything like that but i have experienced a lot of catcalling because i've worked in a lot of cities um like la san francisco and in seattle you know whether it's just men <laughs> on the side of the road um even sometimes like canvassers that just think that they have the right to touch my body and uh you don't don't touch me there was one time i was walking down the street i was walking from the bus stop to my office in san francisco and there was this guy who i apologize if you're a construction worker but he was a construction worker typically what i would do is i would have like very obviously have my headphones in but they would be turned off so i could hear what's going on around me i could see this person right just like eyeing me i'm passing where he they're sitting like him and a couple of his friends his co-workers i just like walk by he's like hey you're pretty and i just pretend like i don't hear him I'm just like straight forward you know and then from behind me he's like hey i said you're pretty i was just like oh my god like what do you want me to what, do you expect me to like turn around and just be like did you say i was pretty no who would do that does this work sometimes like i don't know where people get get the cojones to talk to women this way. So you don't have rights to my body and rights to me. In Chanel's book, she talks about this analogy of like, say you're sitting in an outdoor cafe and you have this glorious sandwich and it's your sandwich, you're looking forward to it. It's like gorgeous, beautiful. And some rando just comes up to you and is like, hey, can I have your sandwich? Let me have a bite. Let me have a bite of your sandwich. You know, and then they try to reach for your food wouldn't you get pissed off? You'd be like, whoa, 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 that's my sandwich. Like, why do you think that you have the right to my sandwich? Another thing that Chanel mentions in this book, and she mentioned it in her interview with Oprah, is that she got a lot of criticism for being blackout drunk. Basically, a lot of people were being like, oh, like, maybe you shouldn't have been so drunk. And she basically shut them down by saying there is no amount of alcohol that forfeits her right to her body and allows you to do whatever you want with her no amount of alcohol and i just want to share that sentiment in case anyone has ever tried to shame you before for what you wear how you behave what you consume for your body there is nothing that you could do that forfeits your rights like that 
So after that rampage, <laughs> let's get into the last two books on this list. And it is, uh, they're two self-help books. First one is The Crossroads of Should and Must by Elle Luna. This book is the, essentially this book basically encourages you to go toward the thing that you feel like you must do. Whether or not you get paid for it, whether or not you think you're good at it, there is a call. Whether that's writing, whether that's making YouTube videos, whether that is uh, taking photos, any creative endeavors within you, or maybe they're not creative endeavors. Maybe there's a job you really want to pursue, but you just feel inadequate for it. Well, take the steps to get there. If it's something you must do within your being and you feel it and you're constantly pulled towards it, then take the proper steps. Stop living in these shoulds, like you should be a banker, you should be a doctor, you should, you should, you should. A lot of the shoulds in our life are societal constructs that don't make any sense and shouldn't have whole weight in our lives and we let these social constructs control us. We are so fearful to stand out, we're so fearful to do the things that make us happy uh, for fear of judgment and so this book is kind of a permission slip to do the things you know you must do in your being and not to live a life of shoulds. The last book I want to mention is Show Your Work by Austin Clennon. Leon? Clennon? Oh, I don't know how to say his last name. <laughs> but this book is perfect for anybody who is wanting to start a creative endeavor, especially social media like YouTube. So this book I wanted to read this book because I was feeling very much imposter syndrome. I think I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I feel a little... In starting this YouTube channel, I really just felt like an imposter. I felt like, who am I to... You know, I don't have these glorious shelves with lots of books. I haven't been reading 10 books a month for the last 10 years. I, you know, who am I? I'm just a little nobody. Maybe nobody will like me. And I just was felt consumed by insecurities. And what I love about this book is it's not so much about if you're not an expert, if you're not a guru, it's okay that you're not the best in your field. It's, it's okay that you're not what you think should is qualified to share a message on social media or to create a social media presence. So this book, Show Your Work, is about showing your work. So instead of not doing anything because you feel like you're not an expert, well, why don't you take people along on your journey? And why don't you um, show people what you're doing to create a better life? That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am so happy every view that I get, every subscriber that I get, I'm always so happy to see you, to see your comments. So Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, you guys will see in my mom comments on every video and I love it because at least one person is commenting. <laughs> Anyways, you guys can follow me on my Instagram. I'm there sometimes. Let me know what books you read in the comments or let me know that you've made an October wrap up and I'll go check out your channel. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.